guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my channel. On this video, we're going to continue going over those important concepts that are found on NCLEX, ATI, HESI. A lot of you guys are wrapping up and getting ready to take your finals. These are important concepts to know, so we're going to be practicing those questions. Now, as always, guys, in order to support this channel and to keep the contents and questions coming, you know what I need you to do. Like, and most importantly, subscribe below share my video with any friends, coworkers, classmates, you know, that are struggling that need that extra help. So without further ado, let's get into it. First question, a mother's breastfeeding her newborn. The mother complains to the nurse that she's experiencing severe nipple soreness. The nurse should provide a which suggestion to the client. One, avoid rotating breastfeeding position so that the nip nipple will toughen. Two, Stop nursing during the period of nipple soreness to allow nipples to heal. Three, nurse the newborn infant less frequently and substitute a bottle feeding until the nipple became less sore. Four, position the newborn infant with the ear, shoulder, and hip in straight alignment and with the baby stomach against the mother's. Now guys, I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. As always, guys, this is a video, so if you feel like it's going too fast, go ahead and press that pause button. Give yourself enough time to think about what you think the answer is and just press play when you're ready. So guys, the correct answer is number four. Position the client, excuse me, position the newborn infant with the ear, shoulder, and hip in straight alignment and with the baby stomach against the mother's. That is when you do that, that's that football hold that you have that baby in. And guess what? That allows that baby to latch on. See, the problem when, when the baby's not latching on properly, that's what causes the muscle soreness, uh, the muscle soreness, the nipple soreness. Why? Because that baby hasn't latched on properly, so they're doing what? They're sucking extra hard trying to get the milk. Why? Because they didn't latch on properly. So four is the correct position. Now let's look at one, two, and three, and we'll talk about why they're wrong. One, avoid rotating breastfeeding. That's wrong. Stop right there. No, you want to rotate the breast so that way the, each nipple has a chance to heal, okay? You don't have that baby just keep sucking on just one breast. And guess what? If that does happen, you want to know what's going to happen in the other breast, you end up getting engorgement. Why? Because that breast is filling with milk. So you absolutely do want to rotate breasts. Two, stop nursing during the period of nipple soreness. Stop. That's false. Even with nipple soreness, you're still going to... Um, breastfeed because you want to prevent what I just talked about engorgement. Okay. And the baby still does need to get that milk. Three, nurse the newborn infant less free, less frequently and substitute bottle feeding until the nipples become less for, um, less sore. Absolutely not. We all know breastfeeding, uh, that breast milk is the best milk that that baby can get. Okay. It's Full of all these antioxidant and just uh, um, all this these um, immunity what's the word I'm looking for antibodies okay that the mom passes on to the baby so you're not gonna tell the mom all right for a while stop breastfeeding and just give bottle formula no mom is still gonna breastfeed but you're gonna teach her teach her how to hold the baby to latch on properly teach her how to alternate breasts to prevent engorgement and to prevent soreness from the baby only using one nipple all the time next question where was i oh okay on data collection which behavior should the nurse expect a diagnose a client diagnosed with agoraphobia to describe a a fear of leaving the house b a fear of riding in elevators c a fear of speaking in public or D, a fear of uncleanliness and the need to bathe every hour. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. And the correct answer is A, a fear of leaving the house. That is agoraphobia, okay? This person feels safe and secure only within the confines of their home and leaving their home causes extreme anxiety. 
B, a fear of riding in elevators. That's claustrophobia. They have a fear of closed spaces. C, a fear of public speaking. That's social phobia. You know, they have an intense fear of saying the wrong thing and looking like an idiot. And then you have D, a fear of uncleanliness and the need to bathe every hour. That's OCD, okay? Obsessive compulsive disease. Next question. The nurse checks the food ch on the tray delivered for an or op delivered for an Orthodox Jewish client and notes that the client has received a cheeseburger and potato fries with whole milk as a beverage. Which action should the nurse take? One, deliver the food tray to the client. Two, replace the whole milk with lactose-free milk. Three, call the dietary department and ask for a different meal. Or four, ask the dietary department to replace the beef with pork. And I'll give you a moment. Okay, guys, so the correct answer is three, and that's the only correct answer, okay? With the Orthodox Jews, a couple things, uh, people of the Orthodox Jewish um, um, background, excuse me, there's a couple things you need to know about them. So you need to know that they don't eat um, pork. They don't eat shellfish. They will not eat meat and drink milk together meat and milk does not mix okay so in this question you see they have a cheeseburger which is beef beef is meat right and then they have milk no they will they they will not have that meat and milk together so that's why you're going to call the department and ask for a different meal so let's look at our other choices choice one said deliver the the food tray when you choose deliver the food tray basically what you're saying to the test writer or the person um, grading your test is that you see nothing wrong with it and guys i told you this on my nclex prep video whenever you see in a question they give you the person's religion they give you the person's culture and many times when they give you the person's race it has something to do with the answer that you're going to choose. They didn't tell you this patient was an Orthodox Jew, Jew for any reason. There's a reason they told you that, okay? So one's wrong. Two, replace the whole milk with lactose-free milk. Um, lactose-free milk is still what? Milk. Can you have that milk with meat? Absolutely not. So you're going to get rid of that. And your last choice, ask the dietary department to replace the beef with pork. No, they don't eat pork. They don't eat shellfish. They don't eat meat with milk, okay? So the only correct choice would be to call the dietary department and ask for a different meal. That's very important for you guys to know. Next question. The nurse prepares to administer a prescribed dose of scopolamine. The nurse should monitor for which side effect of this medication. One, dry mouth. Two, diaphoresis. Three, excessive urination, or four, pupillary constriction. And the correct answer, guys, is one, dry mouth. Scopolamine is what? It's an anticholinergic. What do we know about the side effects of anticholinergics? Anticholinergics dry everything up, they dry up all the secretions, right? Uh, remember the poem I taught you guys for the anticholinergics? Can't see, can't spit, can't pee, can't, right? So uh, can't see, you know, you have the blurred vision, can't spit, dry mouth, can't pee, water retention, can't see, can't spit, can't pee, can't, and what's that? Constipation. Can't see, can't spit, can't pee, can't. Those are your big side effects for anticholinergics, and that's exactly why, what we're dealing with here. And that's why number one is your answer, dry mouth. Next question. Which electrocardiogram changes would the nurse note on the cardiac monitor with a client whose potassium level is 2.7? One, U waves, two, flat P waves, three, elevated T waves, 
or four, prolonged PR interval. And the correct answer is one, U waves. So first of all, let's talk about potassium. Potassium has a very narrow therapeutic range, okay? 3.5 to five, that's it. Anything out of that range, that patient is at risk for dysrhythmias. So with hypokalemia, which is what we're dealing with here, a potassium of less than 3.5, you may see the presence of U waves. Now let's look at our other choices. Choice two says flat P waves. Actually, what you would expect to see are peaked, peaked P waves. Choice three says elevated T waves. In hypokalemia, guess what? They would be flat. And then choice four, you see prolonged PR interval. Actually, what would you would see is a depressed ST segment. That's what you would see in hypokalemia, anything with the potassium of, uh, excuse me, potassium less than 3.5. Next question. An adult client with hepatic encephalopathy has a serum ammonia level of 120 and receives treatment with lactulose. The nurse determines that the client has the best response if the level changes to which after medication administration? One, two micrograms, two, five micrograms, three, 70 micrograms, or four, 100 micrograms per deciliter. And so guys, the correct answer is three, 70 micrograms per deciliter. Your normal is 10 to 80. That's what you want the ammonia range to be in. Now, let's talk about this question, guys. So a patient has hepatic encephalopathy. Now they're getting um, lactulose because what does lactulose do? Lactulose helps bind all of that ammonia and bring it down. Because what happens, the patient's going to go to the bathroom, have a bowel movement, number two, and get rid of all that ammonia, right? So we're trying to get that ammonia down. The way that we know it's working is if the ammonia comes back down to normal levels. And the normal level, you want that it, for the patient to be between 10 and 80. Next question. The nurse assists in developing a plan of care for the child with meningi men meningitis. Which would be the priority client problem for a child with a meningitis diagnosis? One, pain. Two, inadequate knowledge. Three, neurological dysfunction. Or four, difficult family coping processes. And I'll give you a moment to think of your answer. The correct answer, guys, is three, neurologic dysfunction. Think about it. So this child has meningitis. What is meningitis? An infection in the brain, right? So our priority is going to be what's going to keep that patient alive, and that's number three, neurological dysfunction, okay? Remember, it's our brain that tells our lungs to expand so we can breathe, right? Look at the other choices, one pain. Pain never killed anyone, guys. The only time that pain is a priority is in very select few cases. Myocardial infarction, stones such as um, kidney stone, struvite stone, burn, sickle cell. Outside of that, pain never killed anyone, okay? That doesn't go into the list of physiologic integrity. Two, inadequate knowledge. Teaching is very important, but guess what? That's high up on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It does not fall under physiological status, what's going to keep that patient alive. Four, difficulty family coping processes. Coping and psychological stuff, that's important. It needs to be addressed, but that's also high up on Maslow's hierarchy of need. That never killed anyone. Okay, our priority is always going to be what's going to keep our patient alive the longest. And on this list, by far, it's neurological dysfunction, okay? Guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you want to see more of these types of videos, please support my channel by liking and subscribing below and sharing my videos with anyone you know who could use the help. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.